need to have a car seat to take your newborn home. Hopefully, you will have already learned how to correctly install your car seat in your car. Have someone bring the car seat to your room the day before you are discharged so that you have time to adjust the straps correctly for baby if needed. This may also save dad an extra trip home on the day of discharge to pick up a forgotten car seat. Okay, I want to talk to you about a few things that are important for you to know about this harness. They need to be rear facing in the back seat, preferably the middle safest place as opposed to being one side or the other, left or right. The harness needs to be at or below the shoulders, okay? And you want your shoulder piece to be right at the level of the armpits, okay? And you want, once you get him snapped in, you want to not be able to pinch any webbing, all right? So you want it to be fairly snug, but not so snug that, that the child's uncomfortable and fussy. Mom, why don't you go ahead and put him in, and let's take a look. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children should ride in rear-facing child safety seats as long as possible. New research indicates infants are more than five times safer, according to the AAP, riding rear-facing in a convertible car safety seat until they reach the maximum height and weight recommendation for that particular model, or at least to the age of two. Okay, now pinch, pinch the webbing and take a See if that's tight enough, that looks good. And we have this chest piece with that armpit. That looks great. SID stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. It's the unexpected death of an infant less than a year old. It can be prevented by placing an infant on their back to sleep, either at night or in nap time. Shaking a baby even slightly is very dangerous. It causes a serious problem known as shaken baby syndrome. This can lead to major brain damage and death. When a baby won't stop crying, it can be frustrating. The stress of caring for a baby, especially if your baby has been sick, puts a strain on parents. But no matter how fed up, tired, or upset you are, you should never shake your baby. When a baby is shaken, the brain moves back and forth. Even a little force could cause the brain to hit the inside of the skull. This can result in bleeding and swelling of the brain. It can lead to permanent brain damage, coma, or death. Becoming a parent can be a very joyful experience, but often when your infant is tired or crying a great deal or is ill, we can become tired and frustrated. During those times, shaking your baby can be a very dangerous event and can cause a problem called shaken baby syndrome in which their brain can become injured. If you're ever in the circumstance where you feel tired and frustrated, try to find another adult to help. This can prevent shaken baby syndrome. Welcoming a new baby is exciting for your family. But before you bring your baby home from the hospital, have your partner or friend take home something with the baby's scent, like the baby's blanket for your pet to smell and study. When you return from the hospital, your pet may be eager to greet you and receive your attention. Have someone else take the baby into another room while you give your pet a warm but calm welcome. Always supervise any interaction your pet has with the baby. You want your pet to view associating with the baby as a positive experience, so praise for appropriate behavior is important. No doubt life will be hectic the first few weeks at home. Try to maintain regular routines as much as possible to help your pet adjust. And be sure to spend one-on-one -on -one quality time with your pet each day. It may help relax you, too. With proper training, supervision, and adjustments, you, your new baby, and your pet should be able to live together safely and happily. Oh, it's definitely brought us together. When we come to the ICU to feed her, you know, I'll hold her or she'll hold her and we'll just talk to her. I feel stress-free when I leave the ICU and then we're walking down the hallway, our arms around each other. She's really brought us closer and to be a family and she's made us a lot happier. Each baby is unique. 
a great deal of how you nurture and love your child will come naturally. Parenting is a process that requires you to constantly learn. You will discover new skills and insights along the way that will allow you to learn what works for you, your baby, and your family. You will realize very quickly that parenting is one of the most defining and rewarding responsibilities that outweighs any of life's challenges you may face in the future. I think initially, you know, bringing home that new baby, it was, it was helpful for our, our relationship. It brought us together. We're going through this new, you know, great, horrible experience together. And so it definitely brought us together. But, you know, as the child gets older, more and more time is focused on that child and that novelty wears off. So it's definitely, you know, kind of adds to a, a strain in a relationship because there's not as much time to focus on each other. So it's, it's important to, you know, get to have someone come over so you guys can at least go out to lunch or do small things together where you're still trying to kind of keep what you love about each other, you know, keep that moving forward and keep that, you know, keep that candle burning, uh, so to speak. When it comes to raising a child, it is amazing how fast the time flies. Embrace every moment and yes, even the tough times because you will never get those moments back. More than ever, communication with your partner is crucial. Together, you can choose what is best for your child. At the end of the day, it comes down to love. Your love for this precious life will guide you in making the right decisions. Your protective instincts come naturally. You have everything you need within you to be the best nurturer and parent. Take pleasure in parenthood and enjoy your journey.